All right. Every Pony, BronyCon 2014, how are you doing today? <laughs> All right. That's what I like to hear. Welcome to Brony Reviewing 101. I am DeWolstonator, your hype man today, here to introduce our four lovely panelists. Um, all that good stuff. So, <laughs> all right. You guys, are you guys ready? Yeah. All right. First up on stage, weighing in at about just above 2,000 subscribers, the lovely Miss Eliora. <laughs> Representing Forward Operating Base Equestria, everybody give a mighty salute to Mr. Commander Firebrand, Josh Scorcher! Salute! Up next, weighing in at 10,000 subscribers, the fandom's own version of Linkara, Voice of Reason! Save the best for last. Your MC for the panel, hailing all the way from the Shy City, just hit 3,000 subscribers. Tune Critic Y2K! Are you ready? Woo! He's got a top pack. Give him a round of applause for that. Giving me a cease and desist before the panel even starts? <laughs> yes, because Hasbro is just that evil. See, that's what you get for ragging on flight, flight to the finish. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what to say about this. <laughs> you don't own me, Hasbro. Get out of here. Josh, you sit there. Josh, you sit here. No, not here. Here, Cat. Wherever. Right here. I'm confused. Okay. Y'all excited after that? Yeah. Look at this. We have a full room. I am. Oh, before we even start, thank you all for showing up for this. This is huge for all four of us. You're welcome. <laughs> Seriously, we need you guys here to feed our egos. As if we can't get them stroked enough. <laughs> okay, so, Brony Reviewing 101, the next generation, with the cheesiest tagline I could come up with to get you people to show up, and it worked, so. <laughs> oh, you had to use that one of me, didn't you? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, you didn't give us a lot to work with. <laughs> okay, so, how many people do we have here returning from BabsCon for seeing the first panel? Nobody? Absolutely not. Okay, so it looks like... Uh, fresh crowd. Fresh crowd. Awesome. Wow. Woo. <laughs> I love new victims. All right. <laughs> no, she Let's does. get this started. <laughs> Very if funny. If I weren't on stage, Will, that's all I've got to say. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so let's get this started, shall we? 
Uh, I'm Soon Critic. She's Eliora. He's Voice of Reason. He's Josh Scorcher. No, I'm not. <laughs> yes, you're a you're a Josh Scorcher in a sheep's clothing. What? If I... that makes any sense, it probably probably kind of does. All right, so let's get this started with perhaps the most basic question: Why does a reviewer decide to review? That's like asking why does someone decide to breathe, or why someone thinks it's a great idea to say that rarity is worse pony. Probably not. I said why it may not be a good idea to do so. Jeez. That is why. That is why you don't. Because then you get your top hat taken away. Uh, so, why does a reviewer decide to review? Of course, we'll be going down from each of us giving you our own pieces on this, because it's not going to be just all me like last year, trust me. Even though I wish it was, and these people are just here for show. <laughs> Speaking of ego stroking. <laughs> so, why does a reviewer decide to review? Well, in my mind, it's to put your skills to good use. Um, when I first started doing reviewing, I was doing it just mostly in high school, doing it as extra credit assignments, and I was just reviewing whatever really came to mind. So I had a lot of good writing skills. I was thinking of going into journalism. So uh, writing skills is the best thing that you can possibly have when it comes to reviewing. The other thing that comes with it is, well, having seen a lot of stuff. If you like have a lot of uh, spare time on your hands, which is me because I don't have a life. <laughs> Not a lot of reviewers have lives, but I, I maybe you, we you do. We improvise them. You do though. Yes, so. I do. <laughs> and yet somehow he still has more subscribers than all three of us combined. We ought to do something about that. We really should take you down, <laughs> take you somewhere in Baltimore, and just slowly, slowly Josh. divide Back your subscribers. Slowly. I'm already petrified enough of being in a big city. I don't need any more of this. <laughs> Thank you. I'm doomed. <laughs> when I say putting your skills to good use, though, it's being productive. It's being as consistently productive as you can. If you can do that, then you're off to a good start. Why do they do that, though? It's because, well, hmm. I'll actually leave that up to voice. Another thing why I, uh, a good thing to do is to bring something new to the table. Uh, like too many times when I, see, uh, when I see reviews out there, they're always like trying to be the next, uh, next nostalgia critic, next angry video game nerd, Le oh, again, next Linkara here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like but, I'm the nostalgia uh, critic. And hypocrisy! Yeah, I'm like the nostalgia critic, he's the lowly Linkara. Powerpuff Girls crossover. Powerpuff Girls crossover! I'll kill you! I'll kill you! <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> what I say bring, also brings something you need to the table. Uh, compared to, it also gives variety to not just the analysis, but also the reviewing community. Take, for example, uh, like Silver Quill or, or Dr. Wolf, who was here. To, uh, Dr. Wolf was here. Uh, he was here yesterday, but he's, he's had to leave yeah. right now, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. Well, yeah, he gives uh, some really good ideas, uh, like with a moment with Dr. Wolf or, for example, with uh, where he t talks about uh, like a certain topic with another one of us, actually, all well, four of us, I think, have done it. Yeah, all yeah. four of us have been to therapy. Clearly, it's not working. It's not working. <laughs> I, it, it's working great for me. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I may need, well, I may need a new Sherlock Holmes Poland's doll because uh, Horror Score kind of destroyed that. <laughs> uh, but Or like with uh, Silver Quills trying to, in, in a sense, uh, work with the review itself. Like, uh, how many people saw the after the fact uh, Questioner Games? That's where I made my debut, I think. Uh, no, yeah. that you were no, in the falls. you did Rainbow Falls. Yeah. yeah. I did Equestria Games. You did it. You did Equestria Games. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, I thought you said something. Yeah, the idea behind that was, um, I actually got together with, uh, with Buck Brony on this. I uh, had the idea, like, oh, well, uh, for the Equestria Games, we decide to, uh, uh, like, commentate on, the, commentate on the episode like it was a highlight reel. But then I thought, uh, then Silver Quill contacted me. So, uh, because I tried to ask him if he wanted to do a crossover and inspiration manifestation, but said, no, I'm already doing, um, I'm already busy with that. But if you want to do a question games, I said, oh, no, I can't because of Buckroy. Then I thought to myself, wait a minute, you have great production values. We can actually work with this to like, do this in real time uh, while poking fun at certain elements in the episode, like uh, how, for some reason, uh, all the uh, Candlelight Guard and the four princesses have to be uh, nerfed in order for the, uh, 
with the whole security system, which I constantly joke throughout, I think, like three times in that episode. Uh, but again, it, it's also something about something, uh, sorry, I cannot talk, first time on a panel. Give it up for him, though, for getting on his first panel. <laughs> But yeah, it's also about uh, getting not just opinion out there, but getting something new to the table. But uh, I think there's some other stuff. Oh, it's my turn. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, when I started reviewing, it was at first I was reviewing, uh, I was making like little text countdowns for video games. And the main thing I just wanted to do was, I just felt like talking about video games to somebody. I just, wanted, I just wanted to talk to someone about something because I wasn't in an environment where I could easily talk about it with someone. And I think that's the biggest reason why uh, the Brony fandom has gotten as large as it has, because with the advent of the internet, that people can actually talk to people because they're not in an, in an environment physically where they can talk about it. But the internet gives people a chance to talk about it. And that's the same thing with the same thing with the brony fandom. Like, I'm in the military, and it is not the most brony friendly place. Let me tell you. And um, I found a. I, I saw the show. I saw the show when I was in the military. I, I'm still in the military. It was. Uh, I was still in school to learn how to do my job. And I just saw it, and I'm like, I gotta talk about this with someone. I got. I gotta tell someone about this. And. Nobody really wanted to hear it. In fact, they just wanted to make fun of me for it. They gave me the, they gave me the brony shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, ba so basically, it's just, for me, reviewing was just a feeling of I wanted to just talk to someone about, how, about, about the show and what I saw in it. And I wanted to share perspectives because my perspective doesn't encompass everything. Because, and that's one thing a lot of reviewers need to understand is that when you're reviewing something, your perspective isn't the only one. It's like there's a lot, there's a lot of perspectives out here that people can look at things in many different ways that you could have possibly never thought of before. And that's where the sharing of head cannons comes in. Pink Rose. <laughs> there she is right there. Yeah. Yeah. If we're gonna talk head cannons, we have to include Ink Rose in that. Of course, that's like one of the rules. That's one of the unspoken rules. Just moving it closer. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Will you, you, will you just make out already? Goodness <laughs> sakes. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, Josh. What a twist. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tunyora is officially canon. Yeah. Because we can. <laughs> because it's funny, goodness. Go ahead. Anyway. Okay, we, okay, we're really off track. We need to yeah. move on. Anyway, I personally started doing reviews because I like to share my thoughts and I like to hear what other people think as well. That's, a good, that's in my opinion, one of the best reasons to do reviews because if you're not enjoying the process of sharing thoughts with each other, what are you doing talking about them? It's, like, obviously, the, every one of us on stage and every reviewer out there is very opinionated, which probably contributes to, the, to why we have an infamous reputation in the Brony community. But all the same, I don't see why it's a problem to share, to share your thoughts or to enjoy sharing your thoughts. It's just a matter of, it, this is what's on my mind, and that's really all there is to it. All right, well, that took care of the first slide pretty quickly. Now, this one is an important one. What elements are needed for reviewing? Now, this is sort of like going through a reviewer's cookbook. You gotta figure out what works, you gotta figure out what doesn't. It's really major trial and error. And I will leave that first part up to voice. Uh, I can't be there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I didn't even realize I did that there. Never <laughs> mind. Go I, ahead, I, boys. I didn't even pay attention. <laughs> Stealth joke. I like her. <laughs> <laughs> She'll kill you last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when it comes to writing a review, any review, it really comes down to a strong script. 
uh, too many times when I see up and comers, uh, uh, sometimes they would go off script or uh, just trying to explain their reactions to the video, and it really sounds unprofessional. Uh, now, another exception, like TBAP, I think back there, the, you, you guys do that all the improv, right? All improv, baby. Yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. yeah, but, yeah. But again, well, uh, strong strip also helps you organize your thoughts. Uh, for example, uh, take a look at my reviews where I always have it set up, story, technicals, entertainment, value, and moral. Where, and I organize it into uh, uh, certain spots in, where I talk about uh, how well the story's structured, uh, how the characters react, I react to the characters, and going down the lines, uh, did it make me laugh, did it make me feel, and did I think it was, uh, did the sh episode reflect a good moral? Uh, but again, everyone has their own uh, structure to the review, but I think it all comes down, um, it all starts with a very strong script. I think that to make good reviews, you need to be comfortable, you need to be relatable. So, to use Digibrony as an example, you're not going to get much more casual than strolling onto your video in a bathrobe. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really need to see that. that. I don't need that image. That might be a little far for most of us. <laughs> but the point the point is made. If you're not comfortable with what you what you're doing, it's gonna re, it's gonna reflect in what you're doing. So if you're not comfortable, re, casual, relatable, then you're going to wind up with a tense and shaky product. Presentation. <laughs> <laughs> That's really a big word that'll come into play much later on. <laughs> yeah. Well, basically. Um, if you look at my reviews on my main channel, you'll notice that unless I'm like, like got a long string of dialogue, I'm not really doing that really anything that analytical. I'm not really doing anything that in depth. I'm just making a bunch of jokes. I'm making fun of the show because, well, frankly, or it's yourself. easy. To, yeah, or myself. <laughs> yes, I've gotten a concussion once from filming. <laughs> uh, anyway, how did that happen? I want to hear that story. Um, I was. Save it for later. Yeah, Aww. we can save it for later. And uh, where was I? Oh, yes. Um, Presentation. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Presentation. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, I actually lost my train of thought. <laughs> what you're doing in between your analyzing. Oh, yeah. It's, um, it's, the show is, quite frankly, easy to make fun of. It's a, it's a cartoon, and there's a lot of jokes you, you can make from it. And I'm, basi I'm basically not... I'm basically not a, I'm barely ever a reviewer. I'm barely even an analyst. I'm more of a comedian. So, yeah, even if, even if you find my jokes funny, that is. I mean, humor is subjective. Thank you. And I love you, random citizen. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get across is, if it doesn't look good, if, you're, if your video doesn't look good, if you're using like a very low res, um, oh, if you're using like a low res vector as your voice, if you're using like a low res camera, People really aren't going to want to watch you. It's you got you got to make it look good because a lot of people hear and understand with their eyes. It's a it's the same it's the same principle with um, it's the same principle with being a Marine Corps bandsman. Yeah, you can play you can play very well. You can play like President's Own level. But if you're not but if your marching isn't hot, if your mar marching isn't perfect, people aren't gonna people aren't gonna see it because people see it, because people see and hear with their eyes. Yes. Now here comes the most important part. Okay, I want to tie this a little bit into, if I may, Will, and I'm not going to go off track with this. Think professional wrestling, like WWE stuff. Yeah. Any fan? <laughs> like we just did recently. Got any fans of WWE in here? Woo! Awesome. Okay, so think of it like this. Think of, think of the whole reviewing community, the Brunalysis Collective, as I'm starting to call it, as one giant world wrestling entertainment style. Hey. Collective. Yeah, that's the best Mess. word I can use. Mess. Each of these characters and each of these, you know, reviewers have something that is the most important thing that I think any reviewer could have, a persona, a gimmick. When you have that, you have a certain charm, a certain style that works for you. Anybody, I think, if they pushed hard enough, could get up here and just start talking about reviewing. But that's just, that's just talking about something. Let's say you put a style to it. Let's say you do it, a review, video-wise, like in the style of... Phoenix Wright, for example, Let, because Judgment. hold it, <laughs> overruled. Master Code, everybody, Silence. my prime example right here. Yeah. 
You know how to work a crowd, buddy. <laughs> Silence! He has a persona. He has something that works for him. Like, all four of us up here, we have a persona. She's the crazy and angry one. He's the fiery joker. He's the voice of reason. And I'm the cult of personality. I'm Tune Critic Y2K. I have a name. I have a gimmick. I have a persona. I have something that makes me stand Why out. Why do I get a description when everyone else gets a name? <laughs> Well, no car, tension! No color crazy! Well, babe, I'm sorry, but you are the crazy one in our group. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, but you're El, but you're. We're all mad here. I probably deserve that. No, but she's Eliora. She has something to her name. Like, when you're walking around cons and stuff and people recognize you, they recognize your persona. They recognize what you have. You have a gimmick, you have something that makes you stand out. I cannot stress that point enough, because people will watch you if you have a gimmick, if you have... For example, people didn't exactly recognize his face, but they all recognize the hat. Think of something that you wear, or something that will make you stand out, like, let's see, um, your cutie mark, or maybe you're, something that you wear, or maybe if you're just him. You just, you, <laughs> if you go to cons as yourself, if you cosplay as yourself, if people have watched your videos and you go into like a con or something and people recognize you because of that, because they recognize your persona. Also, uh, we're going to save all questions till the end so we can speed this thing along so that way we have all the room for questions. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Awesome. So, let's move to the next slide. How do you develop a good persona? That is the fun part. All right, so I'm first? Yes. yes. All right. No, I, I don't see anybody else here named Josh. Such a silly name, Josh. Like the con chair? I'm probably not. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Go ahead, Josh. Sorry. Uh, sorry, I blue screened there for a second. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, anyways, um, one thing that one thing for developing a good persona is you really you gotta try not to flanderize your character. It's a it's good to it's good to um, look at what pieces of yourself are good or entertaining or interesting and put and you know emph emphasize them, but don't let it consume you is what I'm trying to say. It's I don't flanderize for good. That's pretty much it. That's a big word, though. Not a lot of people use big words. New mono ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. Yeah. I guess Zentite. I just got burned. You just got burned. That's what I just said. <laughs> Uh, yes, I know. Uh, developing a good persona, really just be yourself. Uh, sometimes the, the best persona you can do is, again, again, like with a lot of my videos, it's, uh, sometimes it's very personal. Uh, like, uh, like my Camaraderie Supernatural review, that was all honest opinion myself, because I, uh, that, that, uh, that parody actually, and I, I'm uh, being honest here, that helped me did get into the fandom. Uh, so uh, again, hope if the uh... no, I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> although, the, although again, the uh, ending the uh, ending speech in the second episode did make me cry tears of joy. Uh, but, uh, I have tissues. Don't worry. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> but again, if you uh, it it really is just about being yourself and being able to again ex expressing yourself through a certain uh, a certain way. Yeah, there's not really much, real much to go on here from, you know, me or, or you. Yeah. Well, that works. Yeah. Be yourself. That's really something I think that's important because when you look at yourself in the mirror, you are your own persona in a sense. A persona that you make for, you know, YouTube or anything else, a persona is a very small fraction or maybe even like a big part of who you are magnified. So when you go to that, you also have to find out what you want to stand for. Like, every reviewer has some sort of style that works for them. Some review good and bad episodes, some analyze like certain parts. What do you want to stand for though? That's one of the big questions that you have to ask yourself. 
Do you want to stand for blasting all the characters just because you want to find some way to nitpick them? Hi, Digi. Um, <laughs> I, I hope Digi isn't here. Oh, shoot. Oh, hi, Digi. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I didn't think you'd actually be here. <laughs> Excommunicated from the analysis community. He was right outside, you didn't see him? No, I didn't see him. Oh god, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> I am so sorry, Digi, I am so sorry. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Moving on, what you want to stand for comes down to what you want to talk about in the show. Are you blushing, Josh? <laughs> well, that joke just hardly backfired. <laughs> and just like that, and just like that, all my credibility just went out the window. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, anyway, find out what you want to stand for, just ask yourself that, and once you find out what you want to stand for, then that's when you continue on. Water. Do you need water? No, I'm good. Okay. Well, you look out for each other, so. <laughs> huh? She drugged it, though. Huh? I'm just kidding, relax. I feel unsafe up here. Anyway. Oh! <laughs> I suggest you run before he gets you. Anyway, lady. Miss Lady. Speaking of things you don't want others to see or hear. <laughs> Great segue, actually. <laughs> You want to choose what part, what part of yourself you want to let others see. Obviously, nobody puts themselves completely out there for everyone to see. We're not all strutting around a nudist colony or anything. <laughs> well, I don't know about you. That was my first idea. Uh. No. Mine. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you not want to see me like that? I don't want them to. Keep it PG, well. guys. <laughs> my apologies. We'll keep it PG. <laughs> anyway. No. It's like how I'm apparently the crazy aggressive one. That's the that's what stands out about me most. So it's that's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what that's clearly what people will remember most about me. So that was what got put forward the most. In his case, it's his charisma. In his case, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know either. And in your case, you're just very, very opinionated. I'm not that opinionated, am I? Yes, you are. Yeah. Um, I, oh, I understood yeah. that reference. <laughs> Moving on. Continue. Choose what parts of yourself you want to put on display. Because if you try to put everything about yourself into a single video or even over like a series of them, you're going to come across as inconsistent. I mean, for example, Pinkie Pie, who is all over the place at any given time. Nobody likes Pinkie Pie, though. Are you crazy? Nobody oh. likes Pinkie Pie. <laughs> what did you Do you want people to hate you any more than they already do now? I live off the hate. Bring me your hate. I'm just kidding. I love Pinkie Pie. <laughs> Back on track, because this is like the seventh time we've steered off course. I think it's time just to go to the yes, next slide. Yes, I suggest slide. we move Let's on. Let's just go on to the next slide. What? Okay. Now. This is the part where you're going to have to probably write some stuff down, because these are going to be very important tips that you're going to want to remember in the future. Is there a quiz? 
Yeah. Yes, there will be a quiz. <laughs> Spoilers, the answer is C. What's that supposed to mean? It means that you freaking overextend yourself all the time. Not that I'm one to talk, but st Sorry, Digi. <laughs> but, like, don't try to do everything at once. It's like, I've got this idea, that idea. Oh my gosh, this would work too. This is great. Sometimes you gotta let stuff go, or you could just, like, compile it to work on later on. Because if you're trying to do, like, 10,000 things at once, you won't even get one done. And even if you do, it'll be substandard because your attention was all over the place. <laughs> well, <laughs> Touche. Well, let me just say something about Dr. Wolf. I swear he is the doctor. He is able to make 300 videos in like less than a week or something, and he keeps churning them out over and over and over, and his subscriber count keeps going up and up, and we can't get up to that level. We're not that consistent. Do you have time travel powers or something? I swear to God, his six Hey, hey, Dr. Wolf? Yeah, oh like my <laughs> god. Uh, unfortunately, the doctor is not here right now. Um, he left actually earlier. Wait! God damn it! There he is! Never mind. There's a doctor. Anyway, sorry. All right, um, one thing I want to say is just keep your critique grounded. It's, um, a lot of people, a lot of reviewers, like when that, like during their first video, they try to, they, they nitpick. They make mountain, they make mountains out of molehills, and it's like that's fine if you're trying to make it make it funny. I mean, that's what that's what I do in my videos all the time, and people know people know I'm just taking something seriously that. But sh sh <laughs> People, people know that I'm just taking something too seriously that really shouldn't be taken seriously. I mean, I've explained that joke multiple times to people who just didn't realize that there, there's a line, there's like this glorious landscape between trolling and sincerity that's called joking. <laughs> oh! You had to mention those three words. <laughs> Speaking of friendship is witchcraft. <laughs> this uh, again, great segue. Timing is everything. Timing. <laughs> and it. Well played. And it also this uh, that doesn't also go for comedy. It also goes for uh, when you're editing. If you're if what you're saying doesn't match up with what you're showing, it'll come across as I guess confused. Uh, so, uh, yeah, make sure you're well-timed and uh, precise, and just that half second might actually uh, get your point across. Yeah, yeah actually. Also, oh, also, I have one more thing to add to my thing. You got you to gotta stay on track. You got to stay on topic. You got to keep your critique to the thing you're critiquing. Hey, you're doing such a good job with it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... Timing! Yeah, well, that's a good. Headshot plus fifty. Yeah, that's a. Yeah, well, that's a good point. That's a good point you make because um, it's like for com for comedy, it that's fine if you get that's kind of fine if you go off track. I mean, the point of comedy is if you make people laugh, you make people laugh. It's like you succeeded. But if you're trying to make, but if you're trying to get someone to see your viewpoint, get someone to uh, understand your viewpoint, get maybe even someone to get get someone to change your viewpoint. If you if you get them to laugh, it's recommended, but it does, doesn't really matter. It's, if you keep your critique grounded, if you keep your critique to the critique itself, that's really going to help. Before I get to my part, I just want to do something real quick. Say hello, everybody. Hello. Sorry, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> All right, so this is the last thing you've got to remember, and... was. Indeed. This is something that took me a very long time to figure out because I struggled with this. Charisma and articulation are your friends. You have to have charisma. You cannot just be sitting there just saying, oh yeah, yes, let's see, my own pony friendship is magic, Twilight Time. Yes, this was, the, this was the best episode. I give it 10 out of 10. Also, Rarity sucked. 
or, or, or like this. Oh my gosh, I, I just love the ponies and Princess Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, fans. The power of Luna compels you, sinner! Or you could just be like, Hi, I'm Tommy Oliver, and I think Rarity is the greatest oh, thing right, ever. He's right uh, there. What do you mean, no hit? Oh, dang it! <laughs> I didn't see you there, Tommy. Hi. There goes Josh again. <laughs> it's, Tommy Oliver and Digibrony are always together. How do you not know this? Well, I... Dude. Oh, this is going swimmingly. Charisma, articulation, and political correctness are your friends. <laughs> I never like that word political correctness. I, I prefer the word tact. Yes. There you go. Or just plain not being stupid. <laughs> to wrap this up, when it comes to charisma and articulation, you need to have it in order to not be, I guess, well, I can't really say boring because boring is subjective as well. When it, you have to have, I guess, some spirit. You have to show that you actually want to do this because I've seen a lot of reviewers who don't really show that like they're really in it. It seems like they just want to do it as like a very small hobby and they just they do a few videos and then they just don't really do it or they just quit. If you're serious about it, throw charisma into it. Treat it like you're on a stage like this. Treat it like you have all this, picture this as all your subscribers. Just talk like this. Just put your voice out there. Take everything that you've learned from this and then just start putting together things. It'll start off like a puzzle. You'll start getting pieces together and then very soon you'll have everything set. Articulation is also good because then people can understand what you're saying. Yes? Nothing. Would you like to share with the class? That's not. I'm sorry, I sometimes get good at this, don't mind me. I've gotten used to it. But yeah, what charisma and articulation are your friends. That's what? <laughs> Okay, with, all right, and as I usually like to... <laughs> when I said timing is everything, I don't mean timing is... Enough! <laughs> I'm about to break out my flamethrower if y'all don't silence yourselves. Anyway, with that being said, he is the voice of reason, she is Eliora, he is Josh Scorcher, and I'm the Tune Critic, keeping you totally tuned for your viewing entertainment. All right. Now, now we will take questions. Uh, actually, we'll hold, take wait, questions. Hold, hold, okay, everybody, wait, come on up wait. here in this little section here. Uh, we will get. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on. Uh, Josh, should I make the announcement now? Josh, Josh. should I make the announcement now? Like, should I make the announcement now to? Let's make the last announcement. Oh, wait, actually, guys, hang on, hang on. We actually have something. Okay, by the way, okay, all right, uh, before we get to Q&A. Ladies uh, and gentlemen. All right, before we get to Q&A, uh, just a quick question. Who wants to participate in a video right after this panel? Okay, well, in that case, you're going to chase me and Josh. <laughs> also, um, we need as many people as we can because we need a mob. Yes. And then all participants are welcome. Now also, I, remember, I just forgot one more thing before we get to uh, the questions. I almost forgot this, and this is really quick. Um, Voice here had an animator make a uh, video for Actually, us. Actually, that was all me. Oh, oh, it was all you? Oh, okay. Yep. Well, That's okay. some skill. Okay, Who wait, here uh, wants to you, see a little con-exclusive secret video that we have made? <laughs> okay. All right, but uh, before you play it, before you play it. All right, now, well, what some people may have seen, uh, like a couple of the reviewers, we're actually currently wearing uh, buttons uh, uh, on ourselves. That was actually, uh, the, the drawing was actually done by our lovely Ink Rose, uh, who's right in front here. Oh. Now, uh, when, I, uh, when the first, when the, when the, I think it was, this is actually one of the more recent uh, poses, but at the be when I first saw the, uh, the uh, the group uh, poses while the OCs there, uh, with somehow saber sparks in there. I don't know how that got there. Uh, um, uh, the first thing I thought was when I commented, the only thing the only thing that's missing right now 
is the Justice League Unlimited theme. So guess what voice decided to do? Now we shall take questions. So, uh, we need somebody, uh, yeah. Prodigy, would you like to do the honors? Right. Come on up here. In case you're wondering, Digi, yes, he did put you in place Ladies of Wonder Woman. Prodigy Note. Hello. He's an up and coming analyst. Keep an eye out for so, him. So, um, uh, Toon, I was wondering, how did you, uh, you know, start out as an analyst? You know, maybe the story about the hat or something? <laughs> <laughs> Story of the hat. Hmm? Wait, what? Oh, okay, hang on. Why don't we just have them come up over here then? All right, is it, that mic working there? There we go. That's much easier. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay, so the story about the hat. Um, when I first was designing my OC, I thought, you know what? Why don't I make him stand out or something? I want to find something that'll help with his persona. So I was just switching through the hats, and then I found that red top hat. And I'm just like, sold. That's how he's going to look. And then... I got this hat. Um, long story short, we ended up getting two hats on accident because uh, we got one from China. That didn't work out. So then we got this one off of eBay, and it looks really good, I think. It looks better on me. I think the crowd agrees. Wait, who are you? I don't know. Who am I? Oh, now everybody knows me. All right. Uh, next. Um, uh, I was wondering, uh, you know, uh, Twilight, uh, of course, she's the main character. Uh, I was wondering who you think is the better Dark Mirror and who you think is the better foil, Trixie or Sunset Shimmer? Because oh. Oh. Sunset Shimmer is like the pupil of Celestia and without friend and without like Celestia's guidance, uh, she, Twilight could have become like her. But if Twilight got boastful about her magic, then she would have become Trixie. So who is the better dark mirror and who is the better foil, is what I'm asking. For this question, I must ask Past Analysis and Tommy Oliver to please remain silent. <laughs> Do where is Past and where is Digi? Past Oh! Past. There is Settling the debate. Sunset Shimmer versus uh, Trixie. Trixie. Ooh. The great and powerful Trixie. All right. Right, I don't know what I'd say. say. I'd probably question. say that. I would say that for being a foil, Sunset Shimmer, uh, um, Dark Mirror. I mean, Sunset Shimmer is probably the better. Is probably the um, the better Dark Mirror. She is, after all, what Twilight would have become had she become solely dedicated to her studies. As a foil, somebody who is prideful and arrogant and consumed with their power, that is Trixie. So that is a foil. I would agree. I'm actually going to I second that. that. What do you think, Josh? Uh, I also agree with the notion that uh, Trixie is a foil because it shows how much... It, it, was a, it was very early on in the show that she was, uh, she, she was a foil in Ghostbusters, showing just how, just how show-offy a talented person could end up. Mm. And uh, Sunset Shimmer, I do feel, is a dark mirror because... She and Twilight do ha share a lot of similarities. It's just that one's okay. a jerk. <laughs> All right. Next one. This isn't a MLP related question. It's strictly for Josh. First off, I just want to say right off the bat, God bless you for serving our country. You are a hero to the whole Brody community. And Semper Fi, we can't thank you enough for everything you've done. And 
that leads me to my question. And because I've had family in the military background, my grandfather retired as a first sergeant in the army. And um, my grandfather was also a first sergeant in the army. They fought in Vietnam, Korea, and um, everything. So my question to you is, what got you interested in the military itself? Uh, well, the biggest thing that, get, that got me interested in the military was my dad was a Marine. And uh, the thing is, is that my dad, he's my, he's my biggest role model in terms, of, in terms of a character and how to be a real man. And so, anyways. Um, <laughs> It's like my dad. It's like I really look up to my dad. I really try to emulate him, and it's like being a marine was part of what made him who he was. So I, I'm just uh, and I'm just looking at the marines. I'm looking at that. I'm almost out of high school. I'm like, you know what? I want to see what I want to see what the being a marine is so good. I want I want to see why why that's I want to see what what makes it so special. And I did, and I, I made the choice. I joined the Marines, and I'm glad I did. It's a great experience. Oh, and there's also the GI Bill, which, which they pay you to go to college. <laughs> Hi. Uh, if someone were trying to like, get into the show for the first time, what episode do you think they should like, stay away from? If they want to keep on to stay, watching to, the show, oh, to God. stay away from, stay away from, um, uh, any rarity it depends. episode. Uh, it depends on who you ask. Well, here's the thing. Kidding. It's a, it's the same thing. It's the same thing if you're trying to show a person an episode in order to get them into the show. It depends on the person. I mean, if you if you like if you're a person who if you, if you're if you're a person who likes hammy characters, then you would show a lot of rarity. And if you're if you're a person if you're there, you know the person doesn't like Hammy characters, you wouldn't show them rarity at all. And so it's just, it, that's the main thing about being, it's the same thing about being a reviewer. It's like you gotta consider your audience. You gotta make sure, you gotta consider what they're gonna appreciate and what they're gonna not. If you don't make Stay away from Spike at your service. Stay away from Mysterious uh, Amanda. That, that, that's well. just her, that's just her. All right, actually if I may on, add on to that, uh, what, what Josh was saying. I'm sort of, again, I'm sort of paraphrasing this quote, but Stanley once said, right. uh, every, every comic is someone's first. You never know. So it depend, it could, uh, someone could be picking up, like, for example, one of the My Little Pony comics, uh, and that would be their first comic, or somebody could be picking up uh, Green Arrow or Batman or Avengers or New Warriors or uh, Cal, and that would be, be their first. So it depends on who you're trying to inter uh, what you're trying to introduce uh, the show to. So... I, yeah, either start from the beginning or some, or do something that would get them interested. Uh, honestly, but if I had to pick, probably Pinky Pride. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, stay away from finales for your first episode. <laughs> All right, next. Uh, 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 this question, uh, anyone can add their two cents if they want, but it's kind of relating to one of the Fiery Jokers reviews. Um, I remember you said in, uh, I think it was your uh, response to Flames on Fire 1212, like, uh, that you can't present your opinion. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, it's, uh, 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 you were saying in uh, that video, like, uh, you can't present your opinion by making the audience look like the enemy. How would I avoid that? That's a good one. Well, um, don't be jerks I remember, to your audience. Yeah, it's don't like, be jerks I remember. Well, the thing is, is that um, Spoonie from uh, Spoonie from Channel Awesome has had this problem a lot, of, a lot of times early on. It's like he's become a bit. Of, sometimes he's a, becomes a bit of a fan hater. It's like this sucks, and you suck for liking it. Yeah. It's like that's one, one thing you never do. And also, I've also had a huge, huge, huge problem with this, and I still struggle with it. But sometimes I let I go I go on rants and I start addressing certain members of my audience, and I try to. It's, uh, it was mainly during my top ten overrated games, the both first and second times I did it. I was, uh, I was like, I was talking about Call of Duty. It's like I love Call of Duty, but and I understand it's not for everyone. But and there were a, a lot of people who called Call of Duty overrated because you know it's got got a lot of releases every year that the gameplay, the games are very very similar each installment. And not not going too far into that can of worms, but. Hmm. Basically, I made a tried to make a joke about calling out my audience, calling them ignorant, calling certain members of my audience ignorant, calling them that being unable to tell 
when something good has been forced in front of them, be it following the crowd and stuff. I was, prevent- I was essentially just portraying myself as a huge elitist prick. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> learned that from my uh, my two Friendship is Witchcraft stuff. I learned, uh, especially when, uh, especially an upcoming review, I learned, uh, I'll, again, one thing you do is never insult your audience. Never do that, ever. Uh, because it, it'll come across as you being, a, a, I guess, is elitist the right? A, a snob. snob or, yeah. Next right. question. Next. Uh, hi. I guess technically I have two questions, but really only one, which is, you know, for you guys. Um, oh, um, okay. Yeah, that's right. So um, did you see Jesse's video on characterization? And if you had, what did you think on it? Secondly, um, I'm planning on making my own um, review channel eventually. And I would love it if all the reviewer bronies could sign my um, OC picture as almost a kind of a symbol of... You know, I'm going to use my OC to review with, duh. And I would love it if you guys would sign it for me. I've gotten almost there. Thank you so much. Absolutely, sure. We are always welcome to autographs. Now, here's the thing. I just want to stress this point. If you... If you ever see us at conventions, if you ever get the chance to talk to us, go right ahead. You want to have an autograph? Go right ahead. We don't charge anything. You want to take a picture? Go right ahead. We don't charge anything at all. And bites are free. You mean hugs, right? Talk- I haven't seen that video you're talking about, so have you? No, I have not. Have you? Have you? Have you seen that video she was talking about? Uh, I don't think so. I don't recall. Um, All right, we'll, tra- we'll check it out. Let's see if we can get the questions keep moving along quickly as we can, because I know there's a lot of people here, and there's a lot of people that want to talk. Yeah. So. All right, let's All right. Uh, Wait a second. Oh, wait, wait, hang on. Uh, here you go. Here you go. Signed by all four of us. Yes. No problem. No problem. Hey. Next up. All right, next question for all four of you guys. Uh, Which background pony do you think has the best chance of getting his or her own episode, and who would you like to see get his or her own episode? Ooh. May I go? I don't really think any background pony really has a good chance of getting an episode because this... Uh, Sorry, not even Derpy. I would have to disagree after this. I really... Unless, yeah. we're, unless we're talking okay. about the princesses being background ponies and then getting that, them getting their own episodes, it's I really don't see anyone like Bon Bon or Lyra or Doctor Who. <laughs> Who said Applejack? Who, Who said just that? said Applejack? <laughs> I'm going to well, and completely I don't... biased and obsessive. Big Macintosh on both. It's a, I don't see it happening because I just don't think it would it would really work because. It's yes. uh, introdu- introducing a ba- introducing a background pony to like like Lyra. Let's say we were to give Lyra an episode. Okay, what would it be about? We we would we would have to give Lyra a whole new personality, and she would have to co- she would have to have some sort of conflict that would have to be sort that that would have to be uh, resolved, and she'd also have to appear in several other episodes probably. So yeah. it's just. To have a background character appear in an episode, that's a commit. That's a commitment to have them appear in more episodes. So, and I don't think Hasbro really wants to do that. All right. Uh, I never really figured it out. I, I really love all the background characters. I can't necessarily pick out one, but if I had to, I'd pick Doctor Who's. So, Doctor. All right. Um, next up. Um, we've, or, got, we've got about five minutes left. Yeah. So yeah, I'll just say this: yeah. If you guys want to uh, keep asking us questions and stuff, we'll be right outside, like right out of the way. So if you want to like talk to us, um, so. So this might sound a little weird, but just go back to the um, the tips and the helpful, like the last page you were on, because there's something I need to show you, like the very last page, like the helpful tips page that you're presenting on that screen. Hmm? Yeah, sure. Okay. There we go. There you go. Yeah, that one. Um, I may have a last question, but like, why is what, what? why is voice of reason like staring at them oddly, like, oh my god, what's happening? Okay. And then, oh, okay. and that's then, my, uh, that's my mother. Uh, that, okay, uh, that's marked as uh, 
my mother of God pose. Like, oh my God. And then like, you know, like the, sorry, I don't know all your names. The red hat and the purple hair kind of like inching in closer. Is that like a shipping sign or something? Yeah. Well, there, too close. This is before we were, we were getting shipped all over the place. Well, I'll just really quickly say this. El Eliora and I, we were getting shipped so much because we were working together, and then I just finally decided, you know what, why not? Let's actually make it canon. So this is before I actually asked her out, yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. I prefer well UPS. Better. It's reality. Yo, right, guys. All right, KP. <laughs> what up? I love Kim Possible. I love Kim Possible. Anyway, sorry. Okay, I was asked. Is there any other large analysis, Ronnie, that we should know about? Anyone before Zach puts his foot in his mouth again? Let's just go on with the question. All right. Someone dared me to ask me ask this, but um, what do you guys think about Kim Possible? Uh, uh, the show. I, I think it ended too soon. I think it's okay. I've watched a little bits and pieces of it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Unsubscribing. <laughs> Cam Question. goes pony, everybody. Yes! Woo! All right. He's the guy that destroyed Dr. Wolf's couch in the, in the video. All right, go ahead. Question. All right, yeah, so first, thanks for using some clips from my videos and your video thing. That was cool. Uh, but also, so one question that I had for all of you. In general, what do you think makes for a better review? Positivity or negativity? Ooh. Ooh. I think this will be the last question we go on because then we can answer questions outside. It needs exactly balance. Exactly. Yes. You can ne you can't be too over positive or too over negative. If you're constantly negative, nobody's gonna watch. If you're too positive, nobody's ever going to watch. You gotta find a great way to balance it. Like, okay, I think this is great. I thought this was bad. I thought this was pretty good. I think this is the greatest episode. I thought this is the worst. Yeah, that's If you're too negative, you come across as a snob. If you're too positive, you come across as a zealot. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, like like what other thing? What worked? Okay. What. Uh, like what worked in the episode, and if you find nothing wrong, that's that's fine. If you find if you find everything wrong, that's fine too. Okay. Actually, we take All that right. back. We got two more questions, and then okay. we can end this. All right, go ahead. All right, uh, my question to the analysis uh, panel right over here: um, for season five and above, are you going to try to innovate your review? Um, the, the type of reviews you're going to make, like uh, to change things up, sort of like how the show has been doing. Absolutely, yeah. I think all of us are going to try to change our... You always, yeah. gotta set, you, always gotta, you always gotta strive for constant improvement. You always gotta... If you're not stepping up, then step down. It's a, it's a, a good attitude to have to making videos is try to make every video of yours better than the last one. Yeah. Exactly. All right, last question. Right. This, uh, this is... The last question. After this, we'll be outside to answer more of your questions. And then build. All right. Build. All right. All right, this is also about season five. Uh, what did you guys think of the animac that was that uh, premiered a comic? Uh, no, 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 didn't watch, didn't watch. Spoilers. Spoilers. No spoilers, no spoilers, sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we're, we're going to be modest to Josh and not talk about the, the spoilers. Um, uh, although I, I did like it. Okay. I'm not going to say anything on them. I thought they were okay. Really have much to say. I always like to see more than just a couple minutes before I form an opinion. Yeah, so I think that's it. That's why I kept my that's why I kept my opinion about Equestria Girls too, like non-existent. All right, that answers all of your questions. Thank you all so much for coming to the panel. Hey.